So my name is Sovik. Um, I passed out in 2017 from IIM Mumbai. Um, after my MBA, I joined GMM Fodler. So it's a it's a multinational organization, and uh, we have our like facilities all throughout the globe now. So when I joined, uh, my my first role was executive assistant to the managing director. Yeah. So my organization then was going through a very big transformation. So mm -hmm. we were we had initiated a project, and in that part of the project, I was uh, recruited, and then began my journey wherein there was a seven month program with the help of consultants, and then immediately after that program ended, they decided that <clears throat> there has to be someone from the inside who has to ensure that the imperatives are taken forward, they're okay. sustained, and also like taken to different business lines as well. So I was like seven months into the role. I mean, they decided that I should have a team. So they asked me to hire like three people. And then I started the journey as an operational excellence lead. Okay. Main <clears throat> role was to ensure that I sustain the imperatives and I take those imperatives to different new business lines and improve upon it as well. I did it for almost two, two and a half years. And then um, at that point of time, there was um, like, there was an acquisition that happened in Hyderabad. We acquired um, uh, an organization and then I was asked to move to Hyderabad and be a part of the team that was given the responsibility of kickstarting the operations. Okay. So, I mean, it's more of an acquisition. So, like, since I was already worked in the mother factory, so they asked me, go take the responsibilities, in, improve the processes, install the process, everything from scratch. So that I did for, for some time. And then immediately they gave me PNL responsibility. They asked me to lead the end-to-end -end supply planning, SNOP, and project management. So I was given the responsibility of being becoming the single point of contact with my sales team and sometimes customers. Okay. So that I did for almost again years. And then um, during that time, also when I was in Hyderabad, uh, Fodler had actually, or GMM had actually acquired Fodler. So Fodler International acquisition happened and I was given one imperative wherein I was looking after uh, the responsibilities of low cost um, sourcing initiative for my plants in uh, Europe, especially in Germany, Italy. And uh, so that also I, I ran as a SPOC. So alongside my Indian responsibilities and inter international responsibility as well. So uh, that happened. And then like last, I mean, last March, they decided, the, the, the senior team decided that maybe I should go ahead and lead the plant. And since then I've been uh, leading the Hyderabad operations. Kafi fast track, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> After Niti. So when I look back, yes, quite a, quite a few responsibilities moving like really quite fast. And yes, now I lead the operations plant operations at for the Hyderabad uh, plant. And we cater to mostly the uh, Southern market and also some parts of Maharashtra as well. Yes, but it keeps you engaged. I think it's very healthy for the growth as well, for the career growth, for the company and for both the um, uh, employees because you see yourself leading something, changing your roles and uh, new. you can acquire new skills in the new challenges. So yes, I think from that point of view, uh, you are on the right path, right? I'm sure. Yeah, I, I feel so. And I, I have all my gratitude and I feel feel that way for sure. Uh, because the roles have evolved over a period of time from having something that is like operational excellence is mostly like a uh, function that like aids other departments, helps other departments take things forward. But eventually uh, I got a direct responsibility wherein I was responsible for planning the, the complete materials, everything from raw materials to consumables to bottles, everything. So oh. that uh, is, is something that gave me a direct uh, role and direct impact on the PNL, which made me learn a lot of things. And I also tried and implemented a lot of things mm. here as well, which like helped the organization. So it's something that I always like am happy about. And yeah, it's, it's an enriching right. experience. In, right, in I'm, I'm sure. Okay, so young plant manager. The focus of today's <laughs> discussion. <laughs> okay, so actually, uh, I think um, it's very important to understand actually what happens when you become a plant manager at a young age. Like, what are the responsibilities? What do you do? How things happen at the plant level? 
because when people say plant, they mostly say manufacturing. But there are so many things which happen at the plant level. So if you can share that, what generally happens, the action on the ground? Yeah. So uh, I'll first talk about the responsibilities, like what all uh, are there or which all departments I have to take care of. Then I'll talk about the hard targets or attributes that I um, am responsible for. And then maybe I'll also give you an idea about some of the softer aspect of the role. So okay. uh, in, in my kind of industry, it's, it's a discrete manufacturing. Uh, it's a make to order kind of a product. So uh, starting from planning, project management, procurement, production, stores, <clears throat> logistics, everything would, would come under your, I mean, would come under my uh, kind of a rule or my kind of a, yeah, uh, I mean, responsibility metrics. Uh, engineering is something that is um, a central function. So it yeah. happens uh, for, the, for the complete India business. And um, similarly, HR, finance, they are all central functions. Okay. So HR, again, we have an HR personnel who sits here in the in the, in the the facility. And I have to, of course, work very closely with him because at the end of the day, I am responsible for the people. I am responsible for the output. Right. So these are the, I mean, all the departments and everything that kind of report to me. And I have to ensure that they are all working in sync, ensuring that you know we get the output out in the right manner. And that's for the targets given by the management. Okay. Now coming to hard targets, uh, uh, safety, we have like KRS, my KRS are related to safety, revenue, gross margin, cost reduction, new product development. So these are like in brief, some of the bigger aspects that I directly take as my uh, responsibilities and they have targets against all of them. So they are all objective targets or there are there's a timeline that I need to meet a new product development or something like that. So right. these are like broad level and in terms of the softer aspect yes i mean it's a people people management role money there i mean um at the end of the day you have to have high emotional intelligence you need mm -hmm. to ensure that you know you are like communicating communicating well um so these are things that are <laughs> must so so hr engineering and the finance you said they are most these functions are mostly central <laughs> even the representatives are based out of site as well so they have to work with you and then yeah. rest of the departments you said uh, uh, you have to directly uh, manage to fulfill the outcome of the site so like approximately uh, if we consider a scale of the business uh, not specifically uh, the organization you are working for journally i'm saying so kitne ke log hote honge manage karne ke liye directly indirectly for any plant lead so somewhere between, I mean, it depends. I mean, on the scale of the plant, uh, I know of cases wherein from 50 to upwards of 1500, 2000. Okay. Uh, sometimes even, even more, even more. I mean, uh, uh, I am not tuned to other, other uh, businesses, but then I think it can be as high as okay. 3000, 4000, 5000 as well from, from 50. So it, it depends. Okay, directly, indirectly, you know, directly, indirectly, yeah. Be very big also. Yeah, it's very, it's very big. Big. Okay, and uh, how many people you are directly, indirectly managing currently? So directly, I mean, would be lesser. I mean, uh, I, I, do, I keep my, I mean, hierarchy very like yeah, yeah, lean. Have so to, otherwise, I, it will I, be very can, difficult. Yeah, I, I, so that I can like, I keep it like a pyramid so that I can ensure that I give the time that an individual deserves from me. So okay. my direct would be like six, seven people. Okay. But if you go down and go to the end, direct, indirect, it would be upwards of 200, 250. Okay. Yeah. Because everyone will have their own team and then there will be multiple people reporting into them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. And uh, generally, so, uh, so you already covered one key aspect of this role, which is emotional intelligence, you said, like ma managing the people. So, we will cover these two things in the coming questions. So, apart from this, uh, for example, if someone who is not very strong in these skills or who is technically very strong, who has a lot of knowledge, what do you think? How this equation works? 
<laughs> so, I mean, um, this is something, there are things that you consider as non-negotiables in life. Okay. So even for my operations, I have kept something as non-negotiable, which people can't negotiate with me, okay. like quality, like uh, output, like new thought processes and all. So these are non-negotiables which I tell everyone that, boss, okay. if you want some, you want to talk to me about something else, negotiate on something else, uh, it's fine. But non-negotiables are non-negotiables. Similarly, for this kind of a people management role, having emotional intelligence and a good bit of emotional intelligence is very important. I mean, <clears throat> technically, I mean, um, you can be very, very sound. And it is not, to be very honest, it is not possible. When you deal with a big uh, spread of operations or big spread of uh, departments, it's not possible for you humanly to be good at all of them. You will be good at maybe some of them, but others you will have a working understanding and you will have the aptitude to ask the right questions maybe, but you will not go into the depth and you will not have the time to do it. And once you start doing it, you are micromanaging and then it's very difficult to drive the things at, at, at a plant director level that you want to do. You will not be able to do it. So okay. higher emotional intelligence is something that is a non-negotiable in my opinion. Yeah. I could come this far because of this trait of mine wherein I know how to work with people. I know who to work with and who can help me get work done and you can imagine i mean it's a it's my organization it's a very old organization i have people who are working to me i mean who are at a an, at an experience level which is much higher than me mm. i mean much much higher than me they've spent years in the in the in the facility in the in the business and given back so much so to manage everything to manage someone who has much higher experience than you I mean, Manindar, it is non-negotiable. Yeah. I mean, if if it is something that, and it's something that you can develop as well. It's not something that you can't, and you have to work towards it because at a, at, a, at a people management level, my seniors that I have been like really impressed with who I consider as my gurus, I have seen them they like show that trait, even at a very senior level, they mm. are very good at communication. They will ensure that from a from an emotional intelligence perspective they are very good okay okay so you saw that um <laughs> generally it's difficult hota hai kya ki, um, being a plant manager jab, when the plant is big and there are so many people to make a connect with uh like you are saying you are you have been able to do this so if you can share that is there any mantra to do this? Like if someone is finding it difficult to do, how can they do it? Like, or it's natural, like what, what can be done if you want to be in touch with people on the ground level also, because if so, there are so many people like 100, 200, you cannot go and meet everyone every day, right? No, you can't, you can't, you of course can't. So um, the way I do it is like, for example, the people who are in the staff category who are like, managers and officers and assistant managers like those category of people so i i personally have like built a group wherein okay. i try and communicate with them on a monthly two monthly basis i have to do it on on a weekly basis or a, like a, or a fortnightly basis i'm not able to do that i'm not able to find time for that but i try and communicate with them so i write like on every like monday morning or any time in the week i try and you know talk about the business write it down on a piece of paper, not a very big emailer, maybe like 10 points or five points about what I think uh, or what the management expects from us. So that way I try and, you know, pass it on. And once I have made such a document, then whatever touch points I have with the team. So I, I go and attend, uh, let's say, review meetings, weekly review meetings I try and attend. So then right. I try and find out those five minutes wherein I try and speak to people saying that, hey, you know what? we are trying to go in this this direction. These are things that we're doing well. These are things that we're not doing well. So this is what happens with the staff. And I try and tell my department heads and other people who are there to try and communicate to other, uh, I mean, to their like juniors as well. Uh, when it comes to the, the workmen or associates who work on the shop floor, so we have a handful of them. So we try and do this monthly kind of a meeting wherein town hall kind of a stuff, wherein we call them. Sometimes it happens in three months, sometimes in two months. So it depends. So is there something that has happened which is very good? We call them and tell them something that has happened which uh, there was a quality issue or something like that. We call them and tell them and try and communicate. Also, okay. we have uh, channels in terms of WhatsApp and all wherein I, I use my, uh, the help of my HR team 
to have you know some kind of a broadcast going on in in whatsapp channels as well about you know this is what it is maybe in their language uh, in the in the local language you try and do that acha energy drain nahi hota sovik like <laughs> so much to do and uh... like even connecting with people like what 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 you have just explained through different channels energy drain nahi hota at the end of the day so at, I, I, my perspective is that and what i have learned from my experience with with my organization see my organization is it's, it's a galloping horse okay so we are going to just move and move fast okay, okay. and we are trying to keep improving so what i have felt is whenever we are trying to do something positive and add a positive aspect to the business it can be anything so there the energy drain is very less okay when something negative comes in and there is you know some negative discussions happening emails where in some negative language has been written that's where the at least in my opinion i feel and even when i speak to people the energy drains away even i've spoken to like seniors who are like i said i admire even they also say the same thing that i also ask the same question like you have asked see ki drain nahi hota kya aapko sham tak तो वो भी वही बोलते कि नहीं नो आई मीन द थिंग इज इफ आई डन ऑल पॉजिटिव्स इन द डे इवन इफ इट इज अ लॉन्ग डे इट्स फाइन इफ आई एम गेटिंग इनटू सम ब्रॉल्स इफ आई एम गेटिंग इनटू सम डिफिकल्ट डिस्कशंस वेयर इन थिंग्स आर गेटिंग इन अ नेगेटिव टोन नेगेटिव टोनलिटी आ गया तो ड्रेन होता है ऑफ कोर्स राइट राइट यस आई एम श्योर बाकी भी आई मीन दैट दैट इज लाइक दैट इज लाइक द बेसिक बट ऑफ कोर्स वी वी आई मीन फील दैट एंड आई ट्राई एंड एंश्योर दैट I discharge myself. I go out every three months somewhere, sort of yes. away from phone, away from emails. Right. Right. <laughs> go to a place where there there is no connection. Come back, discharge for three four days. So those things right. I do do from time right. to time. अच्छा इस टाइम जो आपने अभी नेगेटिव वाला बोला सोविक थोड़ा उसके ऊपर आता हूँ मैं challenges I will say some challenges. तो मतलब किस टाइप के challenges you face as a plant manager अगर थोड़ा और maybe a journal case study koi if you can share so that the audience can relate to it that uh is type of challenges generally happen in the site aur kaise manage karte ho aap like what do you do right so see every or every organization be it a plant operations or be it any other operations be it it be it anything any if you are trying to manage anything even a small shop or something there will be day to day issues teething issues that come some things will go out someone will be not in office at the right time some shipments will be missed some transactions in your erp will be missed so those things happen and the way i try and manage it is like i i mean whenever i communicate my goals to my departmental heads i try and give them a priority list as well saying that hey boss listen whenever there are cross functional disconnects between you whenever you decide that let's say the the procurement personnel says that hey um, um uh, the delivery will be let's say after uh, uh, let's say i ask for a delivery on 30th of a month so you'll say no the delivery on 7th but i'm getting better pricing okay. but the production will say that no no i want it on 30th only otherwise how will i meet my target so when something like that is there i try and keep my priorities right saying that okay for this year the priority of the organization is this so ye to karna padega mm-hmm. and when ye karna padega to then everyone tries in a line and everyone knows that this is what we will continue so it is not going to the, the strategy for that three month period or six month period or a one month one year period is not going to change so that way i mean challenges day to day challenges get i mean uh, eased out and pe- the 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 cross functionality i try and ensure that people are aligned and they have good harmony between them so that way it works out coming to bigger challenges of the business being in a like uh, a make to order or a discrete manufacturing kind of a setup uh, my main challenge is to you know meet delivery requirements of my my customer so many a times i mean it's always a you know balancing act wherein given that the materials and everything that we um uh, we use for our production they are bespoke they are non standard in nature you can't get it off the shelf like most of them you can't get it off the shelf so that's a constant balancing act and the i mean requirements will always come up and customers will come and say no you said two months i need it in one month can you do it in six weeks and then then that constant challenges is is always it always continues so this yeah. is like a bigger bigger chunk now coming to the third question of like giving you an example of some critical challenges that we faced so i have one case study um which is very close to my heart okay. i mean uh, so uh, so the, the hyderabad operations we kick started during covid wave um just between covid wave 1 and wave 2 okay. so when covid wave 2 came in 
the government here they said that you can't procure oxygen anymore. Okay. So all the oxygen will be used for hospitals, which is fair. Okay. Now, in some of our critical operations, we use oxyacetylene fuel. Okay. And they these are on the critical path now. The product the GMM makes again it goes back to the you know to pharmaceutical companies, chemical companies. They are using our equipment, and we also have our commitments. Now, how do you keep your operations running? Now, oxygen is not going to come. Oxygen is gone. So then I remember on like it happened on a Friday that we got to know that this is not happening. Our seniors also reached out to very senior level in the government as well, but they said that no chance. Right now it is like really bad. We are in a very bad state, and we had to like honor that. I mean, it's something that human lives production, of course, human lives is more important. So then like overnight, I, I mean, on, on Friday, we inquired and we got a plasma cutting machine. It's a different technology. Um, it's slightly higher in cost. So over the weekend, I remember we got all ERP transactions done, all approvals done, asset done and implemented and uh, the machine we located in, in like Gujarat, then it came back like Immediately it was brought and then like on Tuesday or Wednesday evening, I think we, we started operations again. So three days, it was for us a lull in some of the work centers and then again it started. So those kind of challenges come in and um, we try and be, you know, ad adaptable. We try and you know, like educate ourselves, keep ourselves educated on what all alternatives are there. We have also a very strong, you know, business continuity plan as well. So that way we, we hmm. can in such cases what what to do i mean if such a thing happens so okay yeah Achha, sorry we will change with that okay jaise hum uh, like you mentioned ki you have done a uh, different roles as well ye plant lead ke role se pehle theek hai apne supply chain mein i'll take chalo sourcing ka role hai supply planning ka role hai demand planning ka role hai ya fir aap logistics mein ho theek hai मतलब प्लांट लीड का रोल एक काफी डिफरेंट नेचर ऑफ रोल आ जाता है तो डिड यू ऐसे फेस एनी इशू द चैलेंज जब यू मूव टू दिस रोल जहां पर यू वर लाइक कि अरे यार यार ऐसे भी होता है क्या ये भी करना पड़ता है सो लाइक मनिंदर लाइक आई सेड इन इन द प्लांट इन द प्लांट रोल व्हेन आई टुक ओवर द प्लांट रोल um so i had worked in different departments right i mean सप्लाई प्लानिंग एसएनओपी order management pmo and opex and all of those things so those were department departmental roles but when it comes to like a plant related role you also i mean i mean the biggest thing that the differentiator is that you have to also connect with your shop floor associates like sure. my previous roles had some interactions with the shop floor associate associates but not at a level wherein i had to ensure that they are you know producing um uh, with with the pace that we were to produce or the right uh, kind of quality or something like that we we that that part was not there so this was something that i mean i knew that if i took up this role i have to do it because i've seen my predecessor do it so that was something that came in as as a new wherein i had to be in touch with them gain their confidence as well because when it comes to new product development and all of those things we have to work very closely with our software associates as well as far as 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 well as our managers so yeah okay okay got it so matlab wo the level of interaction and uh, the deep dive you have to do when you get into a plant road lead role is something which was totally no, new for you yeah with respect to jo <laughs> other operational roles rehte hain and and they look up to you right i mean um they i mean they also ensure that you know they also expect that like you will you know when you are plant rounds you will have a cordial relationship yeah. you will communicate so those things happen i i don't do it often but yeah uh, i try and you know ensure that we have a good working okay. understanding nahi sahi hai sahi hai acha ek cheez mere ko aapse puchni hai sobe ki abhi you are young right or you mentioned ki there are uh, many uh, team members uh, in the plant who have been with the organization for like maybe 20 years 20 plus years 15 years at least higher than uh, the amount of time you have spent uh, in the organization or in this role so conflicts hote hain kya in terms of managing work and uh, koi bhi aspect of the business and then what happens like uh do you face any challenge being a young manager uh when dealing with these people who have way higher experience 
in their roles and they are with the company for a longer time matlab what happens if there is any any type of conflict so <clears throat> see there there will always be conflicts i mean it's not that i mean whenever we try and try out new things right. there will be difference of opinion and and that's something that we always i mean i personally always i'm grateful for having such kind of discussions because otherwise it happens it becomes a one way street in my opinion so mm. whenever i mean i interact with uh, people or who are working with me and have much higher experience i try and utilize their you know expertise uh, and not try and you know take it in a different way around so it's it's something that i i i try and practice um and wherein i um, try and objectively understand whatever they have said and if there is merit to it i definitely go ahead and you know implement it and and ensure that i have a very open communication if there is something that they are trying to say which doesn't align with our company goals or we feel that because of this it is not going to happen or whatever we want to do our strategic goals are not going to happen then also i try and you know communicate very well so people who are working with me they know that sobik is going to come and communicate well and okay. if there is merit to the idea that idea also will be given importance and will be taken forward so it's about communication at the end of the day it's a people management skill how you do it now if you go in different directions and if you try and you know showcase yourself as someone who is superior and all of those things when you go in those directions it becomes very difficult then you can't jam and you know take the organization to the next level so i try and refrain from that i try and be you know connected to the ground as much as possible um and if still there will be conflicts and there are conflicts i try and resolve them in a in a closed door and not in a open forum so that mm-hmm. we will try and close issues okay okay so basically uh, at the end the idea and the execution and the overall uh, organization uh, ka jo objective wo me matter karta if everyone is discussing about it then there is no point of whether it's coming from a young person or a, an experienced yeah it doesn't person. matter And, and i always preach i always preach tell all cross functional departments wherein when when we try and you know where our departmental heads but i tell them that see you are not trying to solve a problem which uh, is a departmental problem it's a business right. challenge business so challenge. let's go ahead and just together solve a business challenge i mean there is nothing that we are going to get by trying to prove that one department is superior and one department is not and that of the day if there is something to be done that can be happen that can happen in closed doors but in open communication open discussions open forums i try and refrain from that i don't allow people to do that and try and focus on the business problem which helps me you know keep you know things under control then conflicts don't arise because if in open forums i only try and fill conflicts or talk in a different manner and try and you know pinpoint things which so then it becomes a bit uh, tricky but i'm trying to avoid that but still it's again hmm. it's not possible always to be you know like that but yeah i try my best right right okay so abhi um so you explained about your growth uh, uh in the start of the video and how you changed your roles and you got this opportunity which is basically how the organization also recognized uh your uh, uh, skills and they thought that you will be a good fit and you are leading the role but but jo ye role a plant uh, lead wala role i think uh it for everyone it might the journey might not be same right so kuch logo ko organically uh, grow within with different roles growth ho raha and then they become plant leads and uh, then there are people who might not be interested to do this role also and there might be people who are not sure whether they want to do this role or not altogether right so matlab agar coming to those people jo abhi middle management mein hain like us uh, jinka age bahut zyada nahi hai bahut kam nahi hai they have spent some time in the industry uh, and if they see ki matlab in the future they can become uh, plant lead Uh, to grow जो फर्दर उनको हेल्प करेंगे प्लांट लीड जब बन जाएंगे तो वो रोल्स क्या हो सकते हैं 
so if you can help uh, in understanding that yeah so i'll start with my my example so like like i said i started with you know a transformation project and opex and all so you know my first office was literally in the middle of the shop floor literally i mean okay. i think there was a there was like uh, production supervisors would sit there and there was the opex cabin or opex opex room okay. wherein we four or five people used to work from okay so i mean if you want to be in a in a plant kind of a role i think it's important that you try and convince your management to try and find a path wherein you are working directly in the plant so that is okay. very important like okay. i if you see my journey started with like something like as simple but as big as the office itself is in the plant in the middle of the plant right in the center okay then initial days uh, with opex i did a lot of fiber related work i mean yes it's not very lucrative in nature but it gave me a lot of understanding about how things work at the ground level what people think how you make those small changes to you know have you know good improvements i live in the ideas of kaizen and all that we have small continuous improvements on a day to day basis that can you know yield big benefits um at the end of you know at the end of a period so my advice would be that you if you want to aspire for such a role you have to go and be responsible for production so you have to find roles wherein your work or your responsibilities directly impact the production okay or directly impact the execution or directly impact impact on the product <clears throat> like in my case if you see my role with supply planning it had a direct correlation if i did not plan properly the materials will not come if i did not coordinate properly production would suffer so what happens is when you get yourself directly associated with the execution and production output and everything else then you started joining this daily meetings weekly meetings all of those things happen okay as and when you show your you know your expertise and also your interest in such kind of roles and you you know answer your uh, you know you take care of your you know portfolio very well uh, you whatever is been given to you may, may be procurement it can be supply planning it can be stores it can be production or a departmental production or a work center production whatever whenever you try and give those you know answers or you commit properly and your commitments are met so then you slowly and gradually move up and then you will be you will start becoming part of cross functional teams wherein management will say that hey we have this business problem in the plant will you as a expert subject matter expert in this department become a part of this cross functional teams then you start gaining more knowledge on how actually it works okay. and then i believe if you try and do that for some time you will gain and of course you have to show your interest you have to ensure that you develop the skill of getting things done and then i think you can slowly and gradually uh, build up in a role where you become a plant director or plant lead or maybe associate to the plant lead something like that you can start and go up move up the ladder inorganically okay okay so basically jo key point hai ki uh, you, uh, you should uh, either get some role in the plant itself that is one way to do it second thing is ki if you are not able to do that you uh, do a role which is directly impacting your production or your product and uh, these two things will help you to get in touch with the plant teams more often and then you will start learning the dynamics and everything what happens what not what is not happening what are the challenges which plants are facing and then it will help you to build your profile over the time right okay right okay so so skill ye to ho gaya agar aap kuch role karte ho role ke andar obviously skills to waise aa hi jate hain but right. uh, now i want to touch base your initial uh, point jahan par you said emotional intelligence ka or pe- being a people's person ye kaise seekhta hai banda matlab is it is it always inherent or ki matlab bande ko pata hai ki wo kar pa raha hai and that's why this person becomes a plant lead or a people's manager or you can build it matlab is it possible to build these skills uh over time it is in my opinion it is because i i also feel that i have built it with expertise and with experience only and um, and also I, i don't think i am way up in the in the hierarchy about having like a very high emotional intelligence but i know the i know how to communicate and i know how to ensure that you know things don't go in a direction where do we start okay but the other thing like the best way to learn 
or to improve your emotional intelligence is to work in cross-functional teams. This is what I've seen because those are those are you know programs or imperatives wherein you try and solve a business challenge with working with different different teams, wherein you have to move your departmental hat and be think about the organization. And that's when I feel because if you see my journey, I have like the first project was a cross-functional project. Then OPEX, you have to be cross-functional in nature. Then there are many other things that I've done which are cross-functional in nature, wherein I work with finance teams, I work with production, procurement, contracting, um, any HR, senior teams, everyone. So I think when you try and work and you keep yourself fixated on the fact that I want to solve this business problem for the organization. And when you start thinking in the direction, you will keep your departmental health heads aside. You will support, you'll be more supportive of of whatever the other department says and then in those discussions also there will be people who will not always be at your you know level of knowledge or experience you will work with different levels so usme hone karo apna skills matlab usme you show your dynamics show you yourself as a person where you know you're listening to someone or you are making a point forward in a, in the right tone and then i think when you try and practice that out, multiple projects, slowly and gradually, you learn it. And then you know. And when cross-functional teams happen, it will be like multi-department, multi-experienced people, multi-knowledge people, oh. different type of attitudes you will get in people. And that that's where I think I, I uh, that's where I think you can learn. And if you get yourself more involved in these things, I think it is possible. Right. Plus, you can also read about, there are many articles on HBS and everything where you can go through, like I went through a, a program, uh, I'm again, thankful to my organization, they've taken me through a program on uh, emotional intelligence. It was a three-day program, full day. I was there, wherein I learned that how important it is. I mean, I mean, before I was practicing it, but I never knew that, okay, this is emotional intelligence or this is what is more important. And, and people say that after a point of time, emotional intelligence becomes much important or much more important than your technical knowledge. That's what something yeah. we touch based upon in our initial discussions. So the 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 person who I who imparted the training to me also said the same thing, saying that hey, listen, you know, when you keep moving up, I mean, eighty five percent will become or ninety percent will become emotional intelligence, and rest will become your you know skill sets and technical skills. Right. So right. thanks. Say yes, say yes. So now I will move to the last section of our discussion. दो क्वेश्चन पूछने हैं मेरे को आपसे एक तो ये कि आई एम जस्ट क्यूरियस अबाउट इट ओके ठीक है जो प्लांट प्लांट लीड्स होते हैं उनको कहते हैं बहुत बड़ा ऑफिस मिलता है एकदम बड़ा शानदार टेबल होता है <laughs> इतना बड़ा टेबल होता है कि मतलब यू कैन कीप ऐसे थाउजेंड्स ऑफ थिंग्स ऑन इट एकदम अच्छी कुर्सी वुर्सी होती है एकदम फील आती है अच्छी क्या अभी भी ऐसे हो रहा है क्या मतलब लाइक डू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन provide it so so, but... so like I, i'll give you this thing okay so i don't think this this is the right way to work i think whenever you make those big rooms and all you you know ensure that you are keeping yourself away from everyone there are walls around which is not not the right thing to do i mean yeah. here in my office yes i mean we have since we have acquired an organization that is like 40 years old right. so we have not you know yet broken them down but the plan is there that okay. once we you know scale up I mean, all those rooms are going to go away. There will be cubicles. Even if you look, go to our main office, head office, it's all cubicles, right? Yeah. And even when I sit in my office, I, I keep the door open always. I mean, okay. only if I am, I'm, if the AC is turned on or something like that, I mean, maybe I'll turn it off or else it's it's like open. And everyone, anyone can come in without even knocking and those kind of things we have. But the thing is that that big office, this, I mean, I, I think... It creates more boundaries than right. Than, right. I also agree. That, that's that's my personal personal opinion on this. Ah, thing. thoda openness kam ho jata hai. Actually, I think there might be few people who might uh, feel closed when they see a big office. Or, abhi to in I uh, not IT industry but tech ke andar to we see that CEOs founders are sitting on open place, open table. Right, right, right. Anyone right. can. Right. Okay, so the last question is basically more on advising side. Like, I'm sure uh, uh, people do make mistakes. There are certain pitfalls if they don't talk to any experienced person who 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 has done the role. Um, they might get 
कॉट इन टू द सेम सिचुएशन तो ऐसे कुछ पिटफॉल्स मिस्टेक्स जो जनरली हो जाती हैं व्हेन यू लीड अ रोल इफ यू कैन शेयर दोज एंड हाउ टू मेक श्योर दैट यू एनी पर्सन हु इज गेटिंग इनटू दिस रोल वो उसमें ना फंसे और कैसे वो इसको मैनेज कर सकते हैं मे बी फ्यू एग्जांपल्स इफ पॉसिबल सो व्हाट आई हैव सीन एंड आई व्हेन आई हैव पीपल कमिंग फ्रॉम आई एम मुंबई एंड वर्किंग विद अस इन इन जीएमएम सो इवन दिस समथिंग दैट आई आल्सो आस्क देम टू प्रैक्टिस दिस आई मीन सी when you are in a plant plant kind of a setup or you are in a plant kind of a role maybe you are sitting in an office but you are in the plant right and working in different departments you can design it can be procurement planning everyone but you have connects with you know someone who is physically working on your product right and making the product like great and beautiful and and the best in the world so in those in this kind of roles what i feel is that you are like working with you know people from all parts of or of our society right all all kind of you know knowledge background and everything the 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 most important thing that people can make a mistake is being a snob okay don't do that i mean be ground to earth be you know be a good person at the end of the day be honest i mean and you know take whatever people and you will see learnings everywhere okay it's not that um a software associate can't give you a good idea everyone will give you good ideas but you have to be open to them if you carry that hat saying that okay i have this educational background and this experiences and i am this 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 then it becomes a very big pitfall in my opinion i've seen people go in that trap and then what happens is you become so rigid that you are not able to get work done on a cross functional level you may be doing well on a on a departmental level Uh, a direct direct work or in as in the individual contributor kind of a role but beyond that you can't cross functionally you can't because you have to coordinate with everyone and then that that becomes kind of a difficult thing mm. my only advice is that you know if you want this kind of a role get your hands dirty i gave examples of my shop my of my first office being in i mean it's a small cubicle in the right in the middle of the factory um five years programs that i did which are i mean things that when i look back those things have made me what i am today and gave me perspectives which it's very difficult to sit in a office or maybe far away from the plant operations to get those kind of you know attributes or those kind of feedback so these are things that i mean the, this is one of the things that people should practice and the pitfall that they should avoid right right no i think वैसे भी supply chain agar main specifically pakdo i think you uh, shop floor experience is i would say it's mandatory यू कैन नॉट एक्सपेक्ट टू लीड मैं ऐसे भी नहीं बोल रहा कि नहीं होंगे लोग लोग होंगे बट मेरे को लगता है कि द अफेक्टिवनेस इंक्रीजेस यू इफ यू नो द ग्राउंड वेरी वेल एंड यू नो हाउ द ऑपरेशन वर्क हाउ टू वर्क विद द पीपल हु आर एक्चुअली मैनेजिंग योर मशीन और रनिंग योर मशीन हु नो जिनको पता है कि प्रोडक्ट में प्रॉब्लम आती क्या है तो अगर आप उनके साथ काम ही नहीं करेंगे तो आई डोंट थिंक सो इट विल बी सो ईजी for you to lead at a senior position uh, it, it's difficult like you said it's difficult and uh, there are people who have done it but then they might have other attributes which are very right. stronger in nature um or uh, responsibilities which are a bit different from direct operational responsibilities but i also feel the same way i mean at the end of the day see whatever we are trying to do as supply chain experts or supply chain management or operation management we are trying to do something wherein so there is a product which is being manufactured and it is being you know it it is ensured that it reaches at the right place at the right time now the right place at the right time it can be a factory it right. can be me waiting for my flipkart delivery or my amazon delivery it can be anything and then over the day we in we supply chain office professionals we are you know moving a physical thing right. and in that whole movement the making of the product is the most value added activity that is happening i mean whatever we do this in discussions in erps in i mean uh, in our excel files and everything else i mean these are strategies that we are making to run it efficiently of course but the real value addition is happening on the ground and when you get to know that yes it it really helps and one more thing that i also realized which i think um, i mean is also an important one that i wanted to mention out here is if you can also understand costing of your product like a bit of a financial acumen is something that is it also helps even for me in my role i had cross functional programs or imperatives that i worked on which does based on costing of my product right. uh, financials like not like think into corporate finance and all but like basic stuff like right. reading the pnl 
you know, understanding where your PNL is moving month on month, how and why, which parameters are affecting you. So if you can understand them, and if you can understand the product costing, how is it getting costed? Very, very powerful. So that those then 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 you have two dimensions to your, you know, in your approach. So whenever you try and plan a cost reduction thing or a productivity, when you know where exactly to go and hit the PN, you know where exactly to go and hit the product costing, how exactly the gross margin is getting improved. So that also is one thing that I feel if you can, you know, focus upon plus your expertise or experience in on the shop load. I think that's like a killer, killer combo in my opinion. Correct. Yeah. No, no, I agree to all the points. In fact, uh, recently I was chatting with the, one of the supply chain leaders in one of the FMCG's companies in India. And he gave me a very apt and short answer to become a good supply chain leader. I asked him this question. So he said that there are three components to it. One is source, one is make, and one is deliver. Okay. He said that uh, source, all this procurement, sourcing people, whatever is related to that, I think you sh need to spend some time there. Then make is the manufacturing, production, everything. You need to spend some time there. And de deliver is basically the logistics and how you reach to your customer. So the person who has done all of these things and uh, he or she has an aspiration to become a supply chain leader, they will become a supply chain leader. And he was also saying that it's not that if you will not do three, you will not become a leader. You will still become a leader. But the thing is that yeah. there are two ways to see it. One is uh, becoming a leader with limited knowledge. One is becoming a leader with having knowledge of all the components. So I, he said that I would prefer someone to become a leader with all the knowledge rather than a limited right. knowledge. So, so I think uh, rightly mentioned by you also regarding the make part. So yeah. I think every supply chain professional uh, who knows what it takes to uh, uh, fulfill the supply chain aspects, it is very critical to know about the make part, the manufacturing part and everything. Perfect. So right. we, thanks a lot. Uh,